Heavenly Father, we come boldly to your throne covered by your holy blood. Jesus Christ is Lord. And Father, just as your beloved worship team just sang praises unto the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you know all. And Heavenly Father, I ask for your forgiveness when I try to figure you out. <laughs> I ask for your forgiveness, Father, when I allow emotion to come between our relationship. And I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you left perfection to bless us with the perfect relationship with the Father. And we know, Holy Spirit, that the only way to have this relationship with agape is through you. Lord Jesus Christ, as we plead your holy and precious blood, as we fight this good fight, Father, as we fight this good fight, Father God, because we know the trumpet will sound soon, and the fight's over. The fight's over. And on that glorious day, Father God, with all your holy children, we will be surrounded by all the elders, your creatures there, right there in the center of your throne. <laughs> Say it with me, beloved church family. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Say it again, beloved church family. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Father, as one body in you, Lord Jesus Christ, through the anointing power of your Holy Spirit, who reigns in every heart. Father, for those that is running away from you, Father, regardless of, of their age, whether they're little or old, Father, I pray in this worship service that your anointing, Father, your presence, your light would shine like never before, Father God. And we thank you, Father, that in your holy presence you expose every deception, every lie of the enemy. And you have given us the power through your holy blood, Lord Jesus Christ, to rebuke Satan, Father God, and to speak life in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn around and just wave at somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so, it's so nice to wave. Praise God. It's so good to wave. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's so nice. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our worship service, as you guys have heard, is uh, titled Fight the Good Fight. We have a lot, praise God, to go through. Amen? And don't we always, hallelujah, remember, who is the teacher? Holy Spirit is the teacher. Amen? How do you obtain Holy Spirit through? Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's say that again. Hallelujah. Because I love blessing God, our Father, with a Mufasa moment. Oh, say it again, right? Say it again. Lord Jesus Christ. And it's only through Lord Jesus Christ that the, I tell you right now, uh, we can say agape, amen. Who is agape? He is our only God, amen. He's the only one true living God. He is a merciful God. He is a God of grace. He is a God of faith. He is a God of relationship, amen. How many of you today want to have a relationship with God? Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, right now, you lifted your hands right now, Holy Spirit's anointing in you saying, get ready. Amen. Amen. Get ready. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach us. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The books that we're going to go through, we're going to start in Romans to lay the foundation. Then we're going to go into the Gospels. Now we're going to go into the Gospels because we're going to go through the first temptation that Satan tried on Lord Jesus Christ. When he fasted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And we're going to expose this enemy, this devil, Satan himself. We're going to expose as far as his tactics. And remember, say it with me, fight. We're going to fight this good fight. Amen. But you see, what, what I don't like, I'm going to just confess this to you right now, okay. What I don't like is how we could talk about fighting all day long. Can I get, can I get an amen? Amen. We could talk about it all day long. I could preach till I'm blue in the face. I could tell you all about fighting. I could tell you how the ring will smell, how the blood will, 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 will burn your eyes, how the sweat will, 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 will just be all sticky after the third or fourth round. I could tell you all these things. But the only way you truly know how to fight is when you <laughs> Can I get an amen? And today we're going to fight. 
Amen? This isn't preaching. This isn't for you just to sit there and hear a good message and see a brother get all excited. Yes, you will see that. All because Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Amen? See, there is nothing lacking in you, beloved child of God. There's nothing lacking. If Jesus Christ is your Lord, God said heaven is in you right now in Jesus' name. There's nothing lacking. Hallelujah. The way this world reacts is that, oh, well, one day, Lord. One day, Lord. Oh, Lord, one day I'm, one day I'm just going to be so happy. Rebuke that. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? I'll tell you right now, you should be happy. Amen. You should walk around like. Let me ask you something. Why do we have children of God walking around like this? I miss you so much, Sister Dina. Everybody give Sister Dina a round of applause. Amen. She's such a blessing. She called me yesterday. She's like, I know I ain't been here a while. But I've been praying for my church family, and God said, I'm going to be there tomorrow. She's been, she been working her tail off. I'll tell you, a lot of us are. Amen. That's, amen. And please keep a lot of our church family in prayer. We have a lot that are on vacation. Amen. Traveling right now. So, Father, we, let's just be obedient. Let's pray for the, our church family. And let's rebuke all this virus and everything. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's do that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father. We lift up your beloved children. We know, Father, that we are covered by your blood for all of eternity. However, Father, you are a God of faith, that you want to hear us speak from the Holy of Holies. You want to hear us speak blessing. So, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, through your holy blood, Father, we charge your angels over your beloved church. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that as your light shines through your beloved children, all your angels go before us, Father. Father, we charge every angel to destroy the plots of the enemy, to push evil far, far, far away, Father God. We rebuke this virus that Satan is running around and doing, and we boldly declare by your holy blood, Lord Jesus Christ, that we carry the cure, that we carry the healing, that we carry the blessing, all because Jesus Christ is Lord. And all God's beloved said, Amen. How many of you believe that in Jesus' name? Oh, hallelujah. And then we're going we're gonna to get into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 23. Because Holy Spirit, that was added this morning. Holy Spirit said, he wants to just show you how to be blameless. Now some of you may say, well, pastor, we've been covering this now for it seems like almost a year. You know why? You have to be blameless in order to be raptured. And again, amen. Hallelujah. And then we're going to close up in 1 Timothy 6. And we're going to be verses 6 through 12 there. Amen. Are you all ready? Say amen. amen. Praise God. Please pray for me. Hallelujah. Just like in every worship service, whether it's pastor, I, or an elder, whoever's delivering the word of God, just like you, we're worshiping. Amen. We are not the teacher. Amen. We are not. Holy Spirit is. So I ask for your prayers because I don't, I don't come with a preconceived, I just come to worship. Amen. And it's in his holy presence because he's God Almighty, right, beloved brother, that he will bless your socks off beyond what you can ask for or think of in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is all for the Lord right now. Amen. This is all for the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Amen. What Holy Spirit showed me, he has waves of blessings. He has waves of healing. Sister Charlotte, hallelujah. Let's just thank God for healing on Sister Charlotte, amen. He has waves. Let me ask you something. If a wave comes from God Almighty, how much gooder can he get? Right? So what God wants to see, this ain't for me now. This is between you and God. But God showed me, so I'm going to ask. If you want to be a part of it, be a part of it. If you don't, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to reach my grubby little hands in there, and I'm going to take the blessing that you don't want. Okay? But what God wants to see starting right here, moving over, is for you to do the wave. Amen? Come on, beloved church family. We're going to wake up. Amen? Say it with me. Wake up! Yeah. Hallelujah. And we're going to start with God's beloved daughter right here. And we're going to do the wave. Amen? 
Now, for those of you who've been living under a rock, a wave is when you go like this and go down, all right? A wave is not like you go like this and keep your hands up. Praise God for wisdom because I used to do that. <laughs> all right? So we're going to start right here and listen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. God's hand. Raise your hand. See, that's God's hand right there. Oh, come on now. We didn't even get into worship yet. Look at your hands. Say it with me. I am God's hand. Look at your feet. Say it with me. I am God's feet. Say it with me. All because Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to start right here. You ready? Let's go. Oh, hallelujah. Let's take it back. Take it back. Take it back. It's all for you, Lord Jesus. Take it back one more time. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, every fiber, every cell in me was hoping that that trumpet would sound while we're doing that. Oh, my goodness. How awesome would it be mid-wave? We're like, oh, we're in heaven. Hallelujah. We're made. <laughs> hey, one day soon. Praise God. Y'all may be seated. Hallelujah. Say when we fight, the good fight. Now, now, are we just, are we, is this worship service just about doing this, sparring? We're going to fight. All right, amen. Let's get into it. Do this. Understanding the present time, the hour has already come. For you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. How many of you believe that? You know, somebody broke my heart this week. Oh, an older, a, a, an older Christian. And he said, oh, I've been hearing that all my life, that he's coming back. I said, so you're telling me you don't believe it now? And he paused and he said, he looked at me and he said, I'm just telling you, preacher, I've heard it all my life. I go, I'm here to tell you it's about to happen. So I don't know where you're at with the Lord, but get right. Because I believe with all my heart. That there's children of God, whether you're young or old, thinking, well, I still got time to mess around. I still got time to play games with God. Oh, you know what? I'm still in junior high school. I still want to have fun. I still want to. Guess what? You can do it. Go ahead. But I would hate to be here when we are raptured out. I would hate to face a world that there is no Holy Spirit, that it's just chaos and evil. I would hate to be in a world where you have to plan going to Walmart at a certain time with security because of the threat of being killed, right, whatever it is. And I'm telling you right now, this is about to happen soon when we, say it with me, I, I. when I get raptured out of here. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us set aside the deeds of darkness and put on the light, the armor of light. Put it on. Amen. Put it on. Say it with me. Put it on. See, last time I checked, last time I checked, you all had to put on the clothes to come to church. <laughs> Unless you'd be sitting here naked. Right? You had, to, you, had, you had to put your clothes on. And the beauty of what God is speaking right now in the book of Romans is, are you truly in a relationship with God preparing yourself? Just like every day, I pray every day, you get up, right? Use the restroom, brush your teeth, wash your face, take a shower, whatever, you, right? I pray that every day you're doing these things. Well, the glory of God is we do these things every day, not just to take care of the physical body, but to apply that to our relationship with God. Amen. That I'm not going to get up and go to the restroom and do my thing before, Father, I just want to thank you. Oh, Father, I just want to thank you for blessing me with this breath because, Holy Spirit, this is who you are. So as, as I know that I breathe you in, Father God... I'm going to bless this day because, Lord Jesus Christ, you give me the authority to speak blessings on this day. As, as I speak blessings on this day, Father God, I ask you to use me for your glory. Can I get an amen? amen. Say with me, use me, Lord. 
Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Come on, can you say that with me? Not. So I love this because let us behave decently. Let us. Hallelujah, let us. I didn't expect this, and Holy Spirit said to just say it, so I've got to be obedient. Amen? When my focus was all the pain in my life, ever since being a little kid, a little child from my biological dad, when my focus was all that pain, what manifested in my heart was anger. And in that anger, what I wanted to do was distribute pain. You see, I allowed myself to behave as a demon because I was focused on what the demons are doing. Amen? And the glory of God is if we focus on what God did through Christ, when we focus on that cross. See, a lot of people are, are misconceived. A lot of people are deceived. A lot of people get tricked into thinking that they have to memorize the Bible in order to have a relationship with God. Rebuke that. Come on, say it with me. I rebuke that. What you need is salvation that only comes through Lord Jesus Christ. Realizing that I am a sinner. Right? See, I'm looking around and most of you have already had this confession of faith where, Father, I failed you. And the glory of God is, is in that repentance, in that very moment, that divine moment, when your confession comes to the glory of God and makes that connection saying, Jesus Christ, you are now my Lord. The glory of God is, God says, you are no longer your own, you are mine. Amen. Hallelujah. You are mine. And I need to encourage, I need to encourage every one of you, for those of you who have children that are struggling, for whatever's going on in your life, if that exchange is made, there has been a title transfer. You know what I'm talking about? Amen? Do you know what I'm talking about? On a vehicle, there's a title, right? Right? And if I said, okay, this vehicle is no longer my own, Lord Jesus Christ, it belongs to you. Lord Jesus Christ signs the title and he says, it's mine. Now guess what, Lord Jesus Christ, agape, agape, he, he is so loving where he says, you can keep driving that car, but now I want you to take care of it. And it's up to you if you want to drive it, but I'm going to give you Holy Spirit who's the driver. Now Holy Spirit, he's such a gentleman because he'll let you drive if you want. But it's up to me because I am your Lord and Savior. I would command you to allow Holy Spirit to drive this vehicle. Now the glory of God is, let's say I have a bad day and I say, Holy Spirit, move over. I'm going to drive because this person got me upset and I want to say what I want to say. And in the process of doing that, I wreck my vehicle. Is that vehicle Joey Karangas? Who owns the title? I pray in Jesus' name that this blesses you. Because there's some of you right now that the enemy has used whatever struggle that, you, that this person's going through in their life as a distraction in your household. And in Jesus' name, say it with me, no more. You see, when the title transfer takes place, God owns you. Amen. God owns you. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. God owns you. Hallelujah. I'm just thankful that I am in a position in my life right now where I do not even want to touch the driver handle. No. I don't want to touch that steering wheel. I don't even want to look over there. I just look straight ahead. Holy Spirit makes a turn and I'm like, I don't know about this, but I'm just going to look straight ahead because you know better. Come on now. Am I, am I the only one preaching? Has, has God ever turned on you and you're just like, oh Lord, I really don't know what's going on here. But I really, you, you really want to just reach over and touch the steering wheel, right? But then you know in a relationship with the Father who is good, kind, and perfect, merciful, who goes before you, who has angels, armies going before you, that you know, I know you took this turn for a reason. And I'm just going to be thankful. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Rather, 
Clothe yourself. Go like this with me. I love you, Brother William. Clothe yourself with Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Rather, clothe yourself with Lord Jesus Christ. Do not think how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Do not think about that. Amen. So quickly now, before we step into, step into the Gospels and the temptation and what Satan tried to do to agape. Real quickly now. We just discussed as far as clothing ourselves. And I pray in Jesus' name from this moment forward, whoever is listening, whoever has ears to hear, that even you just putting on a t-shirt. That God right now has blessed you with a fresh anointing where you're like, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Maybe you're just putting on your drawers. I don't know. I like saying drawers. Right? Pray for me. I just like saying drawers. Right? Maybe you're putting on your drawers. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you. Right? But it's a choice to clothe yourself. You see, a lot of Christians ask, well, I've been a Christian all my life. I've been struggling with this, struggling with that. You know why? You're wearing the wrong thing. And can I get an amen? If it's negative 32 degrees outside and I go out in boxer shorts and a tank top, aren't you going to say, bro, this ain't the island. What's wrong with you? Right? Go put some sweats on and a sweater. Right here, God is saying, clothe yourself with agape. Clothe yourself with the Father who loves you. That no matter what you're going through, no matter what, you're, no matter what mistakes you've made, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Say it with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. Christ. I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the scriptures that you know. It doesn't matter how many church services you attended. It doesn't matter how good you live your life. Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is, does he own you? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You own me, Father. Oh, hallelujah, you own me, Father. Mm. And I love this moment because we had to take, I love it whenever we have worship services like this, Elder Charlie, where we have it on the baptistry, and we have it on the side walls and the back wall in the lobby. You see, here is Lord Jesus Christ. God. But before doing anything, he had to die. Now, now get this now. Please get this now. Because only Holy Spirit preaches and teaches this way. Amen. I need you to get this now. Because Holy Spirit said, we're going to rebuke theology. We're going to rebuke all this stuff that people just want to piggyback off each other's, you know, good message. Holy Spirit wants to say something now. And I need you to get this. Amen. That here is God Almighty. That for such a time as this, he knew that he was divinely orchestrated. To be right there, toe to toe with John the Baptist. And even John the Baptist was like, I'm not. Can you imagine? Even John the Baptist was like, oh my goodness, you are he. You are the great I am. You are God. You are Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Messiah. Can you imagine what this beloved child of God was like? I'm not worthy. But then Lord Jesus Christ says, this has to be done so I can fulfill what needs to be done. You see, what happened and why this is above our baptistry here at Open Arms Community Church is this is the true death of Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I lost, I lost many of you right there. I lost many of you right there. Get out of religion. Get out of it. Because right here, he said, I have to humble myself. And obey the Father. And I have to die this death. And this is why it's called baptism. When you submerge yourself. You go in as the old. Hallelujah. And you come out as the new in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Read Matthew. Read Matthew chapter 3. If you're taking notes. Read Matthew chapter 3. The glory of God is, God did not speak or send Holy Spirit until Lord Jesus Christ came up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Some of you religious folks are like, oh, I never heard that before. I don't care. Right? I don't care what you've heard before. What, I'm telling you what Holy Spirit's telling you. And the glory of God, say his name, glory. glory. 
the glory of our Father is for those of you who have received Lord Jesus Christ. This baptism that physically took place, that you could see, has taken place to you for all of eternity. That you died. Your old self died when you said, Jesus Christ, you are Lord. That old self died and is no longer. And you come out of the water. You come out of the Spirit born again. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am born again. Clothe yourself with Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Let me ask you something. When God charges you to say, do not think, does that mean that he actually gives you authority to control what you think? That's a good question, ain't it? Some of you yes, some of you no, right? But see, this is how important it was for Lord Jesus Christ to leave heaven to come to this fallen world. Because before Lord Jesus Christ, holy, religious, nasty people, that they thought they were holy, but they just had the outward appearance. But their heart, even Lord Jesus Christ called them, couldn't be further from God. They wanted to act the part as being holy, right? They wanted to have a clique of other holy people. But what did they do? They made a, a, like an elite club. And guess what they did? They made it so difficult to have a relationship with God that now it was no longer about agape. It was about instructions. And these instructions manifested to the point where these instructions became an idol. It became a God. And we got to the point with our Father God that God said, enough of this. And we love to talk about in every worship service that Father looks at Lord Jesus and says, son, now's the time. You see, Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth, beloved child of God, so that there is no question about how God views you. There is no question as far as how much God loves you. There is no question. You don't have to go to or through Pastor Joey to understand agape. You only go through one man and his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say it with me, no more question. The truth is you believe in the Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ. You trust in him, then you know that my God is for me. My God loves me. Amen. In Matthew 4, we're going to step into the temptation. We're going to go through it fairly quickly. Praise God. Matthew 4, verse 3. Tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, we have to remember 40 days, 40 nights, right? Fasting. I know I'm surrounded by fasters. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Amen. If you haven't fast, I encourage you to fast. Well, Brother Joy, what are you talking about fast? Fasting is when you do not eat anything. Bottom line, don't eat anything. Starve yourself. Why is this very important? Holy Spirit wants to keep this in check. It's easy for us to say, I want a cheeseburger. Guess what? Go to Hardee's. Right? It's easy for us to want to be fed, and when we're not, to start getting grumpy. I like to say hangry, right? Right? You start getting hangry. Don't even know how to act no more, right? You see, food wants to become a God in our life. And the beauty is knowing that we are, say with me, I am the temple of God. When you know that you're the temple of God, you don't want anything having a pool on you. Can I get an amen? You don't want to be a child of God, but yet be in a tug of war. Right? You see, our God on the right, our God, right, he has a firm hold on you for all of eternity. He'll never let you go. Jesus Christ, your Lord? Well, he'll never let you go. Amen. If you don't have Jesus Christ, guess what? You can let go of the devil today and allow God to save your soul. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But then you look at my left hand, as a child of God, I have the ability through, f through free will to hold on to things. What if this remote symbolizes pornography? It's not just men now, family. We live in a twisted, wicked world. 
I'm speaking to everybody now. I'm speaking to the youth. Just because you got a teenager there, don't think that they're not looking at stuff. Holy Spirit just told me to say that. They're looking at things they're not supposed to be looking at. Lusting after things. Well, guess what? As a child of God, God will never let you go. But he gives you free will. You can hold on to that. And all, all Satan says is, yeah, just touch it. Because when you hold on to that, that begins the tug of war. And see, God give us the power through Holy Spirit to rather than looking at this continuous sin, to repent, and this is repentance, and I'm just going to show you what Holy Spirit is showing me right now. Repentance isn't, oh, I rebuke you, I do this, I do that, I need to memorize this, I need to go to this camp meeting and this counseling session. All repentance is, is to stop looking at what you keep tripping up on and start looking at the one who saved you. Hallelujah. And when you look at the eyes of mercy and grace, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the power of Holy Spirit. And now you just, both hands, amen. Both hands. Say with me, both hands. Oh, I, I'm like a panda. I'll hold on with my feet too. I can't do it because I'll fall down, but I'll do it with my feet too. The way Satan attacked Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, he knew, he knew that he was hangry, right? He knew that, ah, oh, I'm going to tempt him. But notice that he didn't tempt him. Notice that he didn't tempt him right away by just putting out bread out there, right? Notice what he says, if you are. If you are. That's the voice of the devil now. If you are a child of God, then why? If you are, then why? If you are healed by his stripes, then why are you hurting? If you are set free, then why are you still struggling with this? If you are who you say you are, then why? And I love this because Lord Jesus Christ, you could just imagine what he was going through. Right? You could just imagine as far as, here is Satan himself who has the audacity. He's stupid. That's who Satan is. He's, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. That's all he has is, is tricks. Right? And he approaches agape, God himself. And this is what Lord Jesus Christ has to say. It is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every word from the mouth of God. And this is why fasting is so important in your relationship with God. Believe it or not, I have people that tell me, well, my doctor said this, my doctor said that. Listen, I'm not telling you go against what your doctor says, but talk to the Lord. Because Holy Spirit's so merciful where he knows your heart and he knows. He's the great physician now. Amen. He's God Almighty. Don't approach God with your limitations. Can I get an amen? If you approach God with your expectation and your limitations, guess what you're trying to do? You're trying to be God. All God is saying is come to me being thankful. Come to me being thankful that I saved you. Come to me being, you know why this is so important in a relationship with Holy Spirit, beloved church family? Is that Father knows everything that you're going through. Father knows your loved ones that are being disobedient. Father knows where your heart's at. Father knows the bills that are coming. Right? Father knows who's going to hurt you. Who's, Father knows it all. So when you come into his presence being thankful for Lord Jesus Christ, can't you see how much it blesses God Almighty that despite what you're going through in this vapor of a life, you chose to say, Father, I just want to say thank you. And it's in that thanksgiving where God says, I breathe on you and my Holy Spirit goes before you. What would take you five years to accomplish, I'll do right now. 
Hallelujah. With all these doctors, come on now, you remember that beloved daughter with the issue of blood? Huh? 12 years, right? Last time I checked, did she not spend all her money? Did she not see every doctor in town? Did, am I making things up when I say that she was just left there on the side road just to die? But it had to come to terms in her heart. This is all Holy Spirit's asking you right now, beloved child. Are you going to treat this as just another day? Or are you going to say, right, right now, Father, with all my heart, I'm going to approach you as if I have nothing left. I'm going to approach you, Father God, as if I don't have a next breath. And I'm going to worship you in a way that I know that if I was to take my last breath, if that trumpet does go off, Father, that I know that I am blameless. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that we do that today, amen. In the book of John, oh, hallelujah, beloved, amen. Say it with me, beloved. In the book of John, this is what Lord Jesus Christ had to say. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Amen. Amen. Say it with me, his work. His work. Hallelujah. Do you trust in his work? Do you trust in this one man, his name is Lord Jesus Christ? Do you trust that this one man, Lord Jesus Christ, come from a virgin birth and is the only son of God Almighty? Do you trust that? Do you trust that he did a perfect work on that cross for you and me? Let me ask you something. Do you truly trust that Lord Jesus Christ took upon his body every foul thing, that it is a perfect work on that, on that cross? Do you trust it? Amen. Amen. Do you trust that he is seated now in heaven? Do you trust now that we have his Holy Spirit living on the inside? Do you trust that the great physician is alive in the temple? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it with me, his work. So when we trust, we're going to close out in 1 Timothy 6. And we're going to go through about six verses here. But we're going to tie all this in together. Because remember, say it with me, fight. We're going to fight. Amen. Right now, in Jesus' name, as a beloved son of God, amen, as Joey Kareng, as a beloved son of God, I am fighting right now for your families. I'm fighting right now. I'm fighting right now for addiction. I'm rebuking right now in Jesus' name. For those confused in sexuality, I'm rebuking it. And I'm thanking God that his light's shining and exposing the deception of the enemy. If there's sickness right now, I'm speaking right now to every cell in your body. That it produces anointing, blessing, healing, breakthrough in the name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am believing. I'm fighting right now. You know why? I trust. I trust. That Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is perfect and that he is worthy. And when God says, when you ask in my name, I will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I trust. Hallelujah. I trust. Say it with me. I trust. I trust. But godliness with contentment is great gain. We're blessed with another, just one line of scripture, not even the full scripture. But Holy Spirit wanted to show you this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness, being content, and great gain. Lord Jesus Christ came in all godliness. But yet he had to humble himself. He had to go through the baptism. He had to have the heart change, the identity that only comes from agape. See, many people, many people misconstrued, many people, they, they, they just completely discount what Lord Jesus Christ had to go through growing up as a little child. Believe it or not, there's, each, there's actual teaching telling people that, oh, well, he didn't grow up normal because he's God. Are you kidding me? Rebuke that. He laid everything down to come here. As a man just like you and me. He, he laid everything down. And he had to learn about the Father. He had to worship. Why do you think at 12 years old he was in the temple? You know what, that the, you know what that's the product of? Good parenting. That parents 
Beloved parents, bring your children to church. Amen? Bring your children to church. Bring them. Because God will raise them. Hallelujah. And that's what God did. Our Father, that's what God did. And Lord Jesus Christ was teaching at 12 years. Isn't that cute? 12 years old. I love just meditating on how those conversations went. You have holy of holy peoples, my age, looking at a little kid going, yeah, but the father, Isaiah said this. And he's like, I hear what you're saying, but my father says this. Say it with me, my daddy. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that, isn't that so amazing? When you could say, my daddy is God Almighty. And then contentment. It was after this. It was after this. Remember, it was after the identity. The, after the, 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 the salvation that took place through that baptism. Father God said, this is my beloved son. King James Version, New King James Version, right? NIV says, this is my son. I don't care, but it's, you know, God spoke. Father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Holy Spirit come, amen. And glory to God for the first time ever, Holy Spirit said, home. Can you say that with me? Home. We have this saying, we like to say here in beloved open arms community church, we like to say one, two, three, welcome home, Amen. And this is Holy Spirit in a beloved child of God. Amen. And then, of course, with contentment. Say this word with me, contentment. Being content is being sold out in your mind and in your heart. Let me ask you something. Does Lord Jesus Christ, does Lord Jesus Christ have to truly be content to perform this work? Many of you said, yeah. If there was any... If there was any inkling of doubt in Lord Jesus Christ, could he carry this? And this is what God is asking of us right now, beloved church family. Is your identity so solid in Christ that no matter what comes my way, I will not be shaken because I stand on the rock, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, my house, my house. Is, built is built on this rock. Lord Jesus Christ. This means that no matter what deception the enemy tries to put out there. Remember, there's a title transfer. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he says, mine. Hallelujah, mine. Amen. And of course, great gain. There's no greater gain than Holy Spirit. How many of you have Holy Spirit living in and through you? Amen. Look at all the hands. And Bill, look at all the hands. We're blessing God. We're not being nosy. I do confess I am nosy, but look, look around. These are all your brothers and sisters that have the same breath, the same spirit of God through Christ our Lord that lives on the inside. Amen. Hallelujah. That means that everything that I'm preaching and trying to keep up with Holy Spirit on this glorious Sunday morning, you already know. You already, amen. You already, why? It's his holy presence. His anointing, his agape. Not only flooding you in the holy of holies, but renewing how we think. Amen. So let me ask you, beloved child of God, can anything come against the blood of God? Can anything come against the blood of Lord Jesus Christ? Can anything come against the blood of Holy Spirit? So here's the question, and here's the final question. Where does God live? Give God praise, amen. Verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. Ain't that the truth? Some of us need to hear this. Amen. Earlier this week I talked to a brother just stressing about all these things he got going on. And it was just things. Things. Right, Sister Rocky? Just things. And you know me, I don't judge nobody. I just love Lord Jesus Christ. But if Holy Spirit give me a word to tell you, I'm going to speak it over you. Amen. And I said, everything that you mentioned... How much of it can you take with you? Well. You know it's good when somebody answers you back well. Right? Don't give me a big butt now. Right? Don't make an excuse. So let's just stop talking about that. And let's talk about 
where we're eternally going to be. Amen. Let's talk about it. Amen. Verse 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Sister Kathy. But if, and this is a big but now, but if, you hear me? But if we have food, now remember, what's our food? To do the will of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You took the words right out of my spirit. This is our food. Our food is to the will, do the will of God. Amen. That was almost a remix there. I'm so excited. Hallelujah, Brother William. It's to do the will of God. What is the will of God on your life? Can I give you an answer? Be thankful. Oh, hallelujah. That's the will of God for every beloved child of God. To be thankful for Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's just practice this right now. Let's, I don't know how long we're going to do it. But in your own way, if you want to stand, if you want to sit, if you want to kneel, we're going to take some time out right now just saying thank you to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I, since I got a microphone and I'm loud, I'm just going to start. But let's just be thankful. I think we need to pray. Remember, are we fighting? You're not just, you're not just doing this. <laughs> we fighting the devil right now. Amen. To join me as we be thankful. Amen. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for creating us. Thank you, Father God, that you said let there be light. Because, Father, when you spoke let there be light, of course, in our human thinking, we think it's this world. But truly what you spoke is us into existence because we are your holy children. Because we are your holy temples. And we belong to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And, Lord Jesus Christ, your light lives in us. And we're so thankful, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you spoke the word for you are the word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak blessings and healing, breakthrough. You speak peace. You speak salvation because it's your salvation which gives us joy. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you are the one who is saved. And it's because of you that we are saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that by your stripes we are healed. Because those stripes that you took, you took it to the pit of hell. And now you just have scars of your mercy and your grace of breakthrough, of forgiveness. Thank you, Father God, for saving us. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your blood, for your name. That, Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what we go through, we could just say, Lord Jesus Christ, and hallelujah, Holy Spirit, you already know what's going on. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your light that shines through us as your beloved children. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you saved our families. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that all these souls right now that are in all of our hearts, Father, we know them by name. Say them by name, family. If you have a name in your heart, say them by name in Jesus' name. Say their names out loud. Say their names out loud. Salvation falls upon them right now in Jesus' name. We plead your blood, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. Because, Holy Spirit, right now we know that you are working on all these souls, on all these hearts. That, Father God, you're going to save them only through Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence for every breath. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That we are eternally yours. Thank you, Father God, that nothing can snatch us out of your hand. Thank you, Father God, that there's no principality, that there's no weapon, that there's no devil, no demon that could be against your holy blood that is in me and runs through me. Thank you, Father God, that all your angels, all your angels stand in attention. All your angels are around me continuously. Thank you, Father God, that you guard my family. Thank you, Father God, that your blood covers us. Thank you, Father God, that no, no matter how this world acts, we are not a part of it. Thank you, Father God, for breakthrough after breakthrough, because all we want is your presence. Thank you, Father God, for a safe place to come. This building, Open Arms Community Church, Father, thank you that you have blessed this church, paid in full through you, Lord Jesus Christ, anointed by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for your presence overflowing, and it's in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said. Amen. Hallelujah. When we have food to be thankful, God says, I will sustain you beyond your comprehension. Hallelujah. Just like when, your food, when you eat your food when you're hungry, when you're hangry. And after you eat, you're like, ah. Oh. Can you imagine how God feels when your food is to do his will and you're continuously thankful? Can you do that with me? This is how you bless the Father. Do this with me. Ah. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I want to bless our God with that. Where Father could go, <sighs> there's my church, Open Arms Community Church in Lebanon, Kentucky. And there they are as one. 
I can't see any different. I just see my light shining through. Because that's who we are, the body of Christ. We're not singled out. We are one. Isn't that a beautiful image? We are one. Amen. Just because I stand here speaking and pray that I'm doing everything Holy Spirit is telling me, we are one. Say it with me, one. And clothing, hallelujah. Oh, don't you love it? Clothe yourself with righteousness. Who is the only righteous one? Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. When you got baptized, and if you weren't baptized in water, I encourage you to get baptized in water. But you don't need to be baptized in water. You need Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Amen? Amen. But don't you, do you remember that glorious day when you got dunked in the water and you came out? Did you, were you still dry? Right? Oh, it's, it's a glorious moment, right? We know it's, listen, family, we know it's not the water, it's agape. God Almighty, amen. And you come out of that water, oh my goodness, the overflow. His anointing, His presence, His light, amen. Just shining through you like never before, amen. We will be content with that. So in everything that we discussed in our worship service, which we're coming to a close, are you content? <laughs> this is conviction now. Are you content, bless you sis, are you content with what God has to say? Do you trust that God gave everything on that cross? Is there anything more that God can do? I hear that a lot. Well, if, if your God is who he is, then why isn't he doing this? Why didn't he do that? Why didn't he do this? How come this happened? How come that happened? Can I tell you something, beloved church family? Look at Lord Jesus Christ. There's your answer. Amen. There's your answer. Hallelujah. Will we be content with that? See, there's some of you right now that's looking on the screen and you're just moved and praise God for that. That's Holy Spirit moving in you. Moving through you. There's some of you right now, and I'm not taking on you, but your heart is kind of hard. You see it. But still, the things you've done, the things that were done to you, it's still too real. What about that? You see, I can stand before you. I can live my life talking about all the things that was done to me by the devil and all the things I've done wrong in my life. But remember, all that's going to manifest is anger and sin. But if I can just stay focused on what the perfect one, my God, did for me. The glory of God is, is that as we stay focused and now we trust in Lord Jesus Christ. There's no question now that we know how much God loves us. And it's in this love, say it with me, in this love. It's in this love where God exposes the devil. You see, it took me surrendering, stopping, falling on my face and knees and saying, God, forgive me, I sinned against you. I need you, Lord Jesus Christ. It took that right there for God to show me that everything that I was blaming God for was Satan. And it's that glorious moment when God reveals to you through his light that devil did that to you. You see, right now there's a stillness in this room because right now Holy Spirit's exposing things. Past hurt, right? Past transgression, past, past, past. I'm going to tell you right now, if Jesus Christ is your Lord, you can't hold on to that no more. If he truly is your Lord, your God, you can't hold on to it no more. Amen? Are you content? So we discussed this earlier. When you're content, you trust and you know. Can I get an amen? You trust and you know. And this is where we step into 1 Thessalonians. We're going to go over this quickly because many of you know it. You remember, you remember, memorize it. Pray for me. You, you, uh. English is hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. You remember, mm. you know this. You don't know this. <laughs> you know this. There you go, Kentucky. We'll just stick in Kentucky terms, all right? You know this, right? Let's read it. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole, oh, come on, say it with me, spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
He's coming soon. Don't let anybody deceive you. Amen. You know how the devil right right now, right now, you know how the devil right now is trying to trying to deceive children of God? You still got time to have fun. I'm going to tell you right now, I've never had this much fun in my life being a child of God. In my entire life. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. It really does. Amen. There's no other way to live. This is the abundant life. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Praise God. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body. So many of you, it's been, woo, it's been a while, hasn't it? Many of you. Some of you are like, wow, that's throwback, right? It's been about a year, right? This is Brother Joey. I throw myself under the bus because you guys know I don't want to offend nobody. Amen. And I just want to bless you. This is me. This is my spirit with my heart, the Holy of Holies. This is my body. And this is my soul. Amen. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. It's just coming to life. And what God is asking is for all of that, say with me, all of that. To be blameless. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face, beloved church family. Stick with me. Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're probably just going to preach for eight hours today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. First time. Amen. So let's get into this. Praise God. We will be content with that. When I trust that Jesus Christ is who he is. The Messiah. The only son of God. The beloved. The perfect sacrifice of God Almighty. God had to produce his own sacrifice to fulfill everything in the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. It only, the only perfect one. You want to talk about laws all day long, you want to be all uh, whatever, you know, crunchy about it and everything, that's fine. I will fellowship with you, I will talk about it, but at the end of the sentence I'm going to say, it all leads to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? I don't worship laws. I, I rebuke that. I don't worship laws. You know why? I worship Lord Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all the law. Can I get an amen? I'm a new covenant believer now. I'm covered by the blood. Amen. And if you're going to be sitting here crunchy, it, what, are you 100% are you Jew? Who's 100% Jews in here? Then put a smile on your face, okay, because it wasn't meant for you. We will be content with that. Are you content? That Lord Jesus Christ is who he says he is. Do you trust? So do you know now how much God loves you in what Lord Jesus Christ did on that cross, Brother David? Do you know how much God loves you? See, I ask this question, and I'm not moving forward fast. I thought I was, but I have to ask this because if you truly know the love of God that was demonstrated through Lord Jesus Christ, if you truly know the love, then why would you allow something in the temple to hurt it? Why would you allow something in the temple to try to drag you away? See, this is where God wants us to rest in. Do we know truly this love? Because, see, it's easy to say, yes, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Oh, I've been saved for 38 years. Right? I've been going to this church. That's fine, brother, sister. That's, that's great. Hallelujah. But do you know this love? The reason why this is so important to the Holy Spirit is that when you know. Say it with me. I know. When you know, this is when Holy Spirit now starts to manifest his fruit. This is how Holy Spirit, his presence starts to overflow in your life. You see, the, way, the only way Holy Spirit will manifest in a beloved soul, in a beloved child of God, is he, is he has to be the only God. God doesn't share real estate. If you say that you're God's property, you best make sure that it's only his presence. Amen? This is what leads... When you see, <laughs> when, when, this is what leads when you see, when you trust and the Holy of Holies is consumed with his anointing, right? When agape is your God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is in love with me. And I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I show this love to God in the way that I bless his holy temple. 
And whatever I allow in it, I know that I allow blessings of the Lord. I allow life. I allow the word of God to saturate me, to fill me in the overflow. I allow his presence to just bless me because this is my food. And I know that I'm clothed in his righteousness because as I bless him in thanksgiving and I allow his anointing, his, oh, his holy presence. You could feel it right now. His Holy Spirit just flowing through my bones, through my muscles, every cell. I know that when I bless Holy Spirit this way, that his Holy Spirit is overflowing within me. You see, it's when you do this, your spirit man, say with me, spirit man. Your spirit man, hallelujah, is saturated by Holy Spirit. And your spirit man, hallelujah, is strong. Your spirit man can walk through the beer and liquor aisle. And even though I was an addict for 15 years, I walked through going, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Nothing has a pull on me. Amen. My spirit man is so strong that even when I'm in Walmart and a girl walks by with short shorts and a tube top, that I'm like, what in the world? That in the past it would take my attention and I would look maybe a, a second too longer. Now in Jesus' name I just drop my head, Lord Jesus help her. Because she's trying to find attention. Her identity is in the way she looks right now. But Father, I pray she finds her identity in you and only you, Lord Jesus Christ. You see, these are, these are the ways that we fight this fight. But how do you not fight this fight? How do you not punch this devil square in the teeth? Is when you look and, oh, well, it's, that's, not, that's not bad to look at for a little. I only looked five seconds this time. That's not that bad. And you start trying to convince yourself. And guess what? The devil himself is saying, yeah, it's all right. You can do it. You can do it. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. If you are, if you are a child of God, go ahead and look at that girl because you're covered by the blood. Go ahead and, and, and lust after her. Say it with me, no more. See, this is God's Holy Spirit in charge of the temple. And look at the illustration. My spirit, man, glory to God, it's all Lord Jesus Christ, is that big. And look at my soul, my soul that is eternally kept in the Father's hand for all of eternity. My soul, my thoughts, what I think about, how I act, right? What I'm, what I'm after in life. God protects my soul because Holy Spirit says, this is mine. You ever go to a club back in the day? I had to say back in the day because I pray, well, whatever. But you have those big bouncers like Brother Bruce, right? Like Brother Bruce, Amen. Brother Bruce, can you stand in front of that door for me real quick? Holy Spirit just showed this to me. Praise God. I, Holy Spirit's just been teaching this way lately. So I'm just, you know, glory to God. Let's just give. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. To give God praise. Amen. Now by the grace of God, this is Holy Spirit. Behind those doors is our thoughts, is our soul. I'm just going to throw myself under the bus because this is my illustration that I want to bless you with. And I pray, beloved child of God, this is you. Amen. But Lord Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only door. And I went through that door and now my soul is protected. And now that I choose to worship God Almighty and I bless Holy Spirit in my life, I said to you, Holy Spirit is my God. Holy Spirit standing right there. Now check this out. This is what a devil tries to do. A devil tries to go like this. The devil can't even come close to Holy Spirit. Amen. And the glory of God is this. Is that the more and more you bless Holy Spirit, guess what? Oh, hallelujah. He did it. I didn't have to tell him nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of God, hallelujah, the light of God, amen. The light of God gets more and more powerful because you're blessing his holy presence. And now look, Satan himself is going not like this, but he's just running. He's running away, amen. Thank you, Brother Bruce. 
So you saw how Holy Spirit protects you, right? Now look at the little bitty bitty right there. That's this. That's this. This is the number one thing souls struggle with right here. This is what the Bible calls the lust of the flesh. But what Holy Spirit wanted to show you in that illustration, praise God that Brother Bruce stood in for Holy Spirit. We all have Holy Spirit in us, amen. Is that God wants to be present in your life in a relationship for his anointing to flow, for his light to shine through. And it all starts in trusting and being thankful to Lord Jesus Christ, amen. When you trust and you're thankful to Lord Jesus Christ, God knows that you know who he is. Now, of course, you guys see... I don't know why I look like I stole something, forgive me, but uh, I need to work on my face there. Now we want to expose the devil. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation, traps, into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And in this illustration, I wanted to show you what it looks like as far as having your spirit man being abused. How do you abuse your spirit, man? You open yourself up to darkness. You start allowing things that are not of God in your life, and it becomes a part of you. Now the addiction is not an addiction, it's just what I need. No, the only thing you need is Lord Jesus Christ. So what happens now when your spirit man is really, really small, really itty bitty? Your soul now starts wandering. Your thoughts start wandering. See, it's supposed to be consumed with thanksgiving, right? Trust in Lord Jesus. But listen, family, you can feel it right now. I am begging you, fight. I can't pray you into heaven. This is between you and God Almighty, amen? Amen. But if you're going to allow things to happen, let's, guess what? God already did it on the cross, amen? But I'm exposing this devil right now. Because if your thoughts are everywhere, worry, addiction, anger, greed, lust, right? Social media, come on now, am I, am I, am I preaching now? Whatever it is, if your soul is just addicted to those things, your spirit man, your itty bitty spirit man, Holy Spirit himself is saying, I need to get into worship with the Father. I need you to start being thankful for Lord Jesus. I need you to start thinking of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because if you don't, look at what happens with this flesh. Yes. Good word, brother. It grows stronger. Then next thing you know, it takes over. This flesh now takes control. It holds the body hostage. Now remember, beloved child of God, remember I talked to you about the title transfer? Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah? God, God issued a title transfer and praise God. I don't question anybody. I don't. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved through his blood. Can I get an amen? I'm, I'm not one to question or judge. Praise God. God is God Almighty. Amen. What, I, what I'm asking of you today is will you worship him and let him shine through your life, amen. That's that's the face you get when you're crunchy, right there. But you, man of God, flee from all this. You know what all this is? Want. Want. May I say this to you, beloved church family? When you start wanting things, you've actually allowed that desire to come in your heart. And when that desire comes into your heart and takes control over you, now it consumes your thoughts. And now all you're thinking about is this very thing because I want it. And listen to me, beloved church family. Our God is God Almighty. He wants you blessed in the overflow. He wants your finances blessed. He wants your health to be beyond what you can ever understand or comprehend because of his holy presence. He wants your loved ones all blessed. He wants you to have money. He wants you to do all these because you are his testimony. But when we allow the blessings, the wants... To become idols in our life, God has nothing to do with it. And 
God is saying, let's rebuke those wants and be content with what Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. The word of God says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and courage. And say it with me, gentleness. Amen. Gentleness. Praise God. Pursue overflows. Can you say that word with me, overflow? overflow. And I am recovered on Tuesday evenings. We're not in this step no more, but we had this graphic that a lot of our church family loves. And it just shows what Lord Jesus Christ did when you got saved. He gave you a new life. Can you get an amen? amen? He gave you a new life. But it's up to you. Say it with me, up to me. It's up to you in a relationship with the living God, agape, to have this life of abundance. And we call it overflow. Amen? Overflow. And we're closing right now. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen? This is the overflow of God. Take hold of the eternal life. To which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. How many of you on that glorious day when you received Lord Jesus Christ, some of you just cried? How many of you cried? Amen. Keep your hand up. How many of you said a prayer? Amen. On that glorious day when you received Lord Jesus Christ, how many of you said a prayer? Amen. How many of you at one point you couldn't say anything? Put your hand up if you couldn't say anything, right? You're just in a loss of words. Amen. May I tell you, beloved child of God, it was a perfect prayer. And that prayer that you prayed echoes throughout all of eternity. And I just want to say thank you so much for your heart of blessing God Almighty. Amen. You see, this good fight of faith, as I, as I promise you, we fought today. Can I get an amen? We fought today. This good fight of the faith in 2 Corinthians 4.13, I don't have it up here, but it's believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. This is the spirit of faith. Who is our faith? Amen. So isn't this beautiful that God here is saying, you want to fight this fight? Speak life. You want to fight this fight? Speak trust. You want to fight this fight? Speak what you know. That Jesus Christ is my Lord. And he did it all for me. If there's anybody... If there's anybody in this world that deserves praise, glory, that deserves for us to just come faithfully to worship, who is this only man? Lord Jesus Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you all would stand up with me, please. Praise God. In the, in the presence of many witnesses to overflow, believe, speak, trust, and know. I am content with that. I trust in agape. Who is agape? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Know your identity in Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know your identity? And do you overflow with Holy Spirit anointing that is in you? Are you overflowing? Beloved church family, I say this with all sincerity, with just agape in me and flowing through me. I love you. I love you. I, I love you. I love you. And I, and I pray that you don't leave this place the same. That if you need anything, first and foremost, when this song plays, come to the altar. We're going to have, we, we normally always have all the leadership up here just worshiping and praying anyway. But if you, need a, if you need prayer, if you're dealing with something, ask for prayer from the leadership. You know why? Remember what Lord Jesus Christ did. He humbled himself. And God is asking us right now, will we humble ourselves? Please don't leave here the same. Because Holy Spirit wants to bless you with life-changing revelation. Amen. What God has done in this worship service, in your life, in your heart's desires, and what you're believing God for, is he knocked this enemy out. Amen? I believe this. And just to summarize everything, once again, fight the good fight of faith. The T is to trust. Say it with me, trust. The K is to know. Say no. And the O is to overflow. Amen? Are we ready to knock out this enemy every day, every week? Are you ready to bless Holy Spirit in ways like, like what God just showed us through Brother Bruce? Are you ready to bless His presence in your life that wherever you go, His light goes before you and the kingdom of darkness is just scattering and running away going, I can't, I can't even be around this? Church, I'm asking you, do you want that? 
Yes, then let's act like it in Jesus' name. Amen? I want it. Amen? I want everything that my Lord Jesus paid for. And I'm not going to live this life, oh, woe is me. I'm going to live this life in victory. Because Jesus Christ is my Lord. I am a temple of God. And his Holy Spirit lives in me. And his presence will flow from me and bless every soul that is around me. Why? Because Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah.